Welcome back. Today on Meow, I want to talk about something that really gets us into the holiday spirit for like, I don't know, like the third month in a row. I guess January didn't have one. Anyways, what's the best Valentine's Day movie? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's February, so you have to talk about Valentine's Day, the most corporate holiday in the world outside of Labor Day, I guess, because unions and and i know that valentine's day annoys a lot of guys specifically but just as many women or maybe not just as many but i've met a few who are like i don't like valentine's day and i'm like cool there are many examples of good valentine's day movies good romantic movies there are rom-coms such as the wedding planner and i actually made a list last year of the top 10 best rom-coms for men so go check that out, you'll like it. But there are also other movies like When Harry Met Sally, La La Land, uh, The Princess Bride. E even the Pirates of the Caribbean original trilogy kind of fits into that vein as well. But I don't wanna talk about those movies, mainly because it's been a while since I've seen most of them and I, I don't wanna watch it again before filming this. So anyways, no, the movie that I wanna talk about today, the movie that I think you should watch on your Valentine Day, whether single or with a significant other, is Jojo Rabbit. Carl, what's Jojo Rabbit? Hey, I'm glad you asked. Jojo Rabbit is a movie made by Taika Waititi in the past. I can't remember when it is, 2018, 2019, somewhere in there. And it follows a young 10 year old boy who happens to be uh, a Nazi. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, I'm really feeling the love right now. Let's continue. It, perfect, because I was gonna continue. So this boy is an ardent admirer of Adolf Hitler and he actually imagines a version of Hitler in his head played by Taika Waititi. The boy gets some scars on his face from a grenade toss that accidentally bounces back and hits him. And for the rest of the movie, he's basically feeling as though he can't support the war, obviously being World War II or the Great Second War. And so because of that, he's basically stuck at home for the majority of the movie. Now, what it gets interesting is that while his dad is off at in the war, uh, his mom is actually a freedom fighter. Uh, she disagrees with the Nazism of the Germans at the time. And because of that, she's actually hiding a Jew in her attic, which the boy is not aware of. So one day the boy finds out that there's a Jew in there. And so he spends most of the movie getting to know her, trying to put together this book of anti-Semitic things to write about the Jews so that he can present and hopefully uh, get Hitler's appraisal for finding out the Jews' weakness or, or whatever. Obviously, the girl is making up all, all of this stuff just to kind of freak him out and keep him on edge. But as they get to know each other, they become closer and closer. And at the same time, he realizes that his mom is fighting for the resistance. That's a whole bit of drama into and of itself. But eventually, one day, he's walking down the town square and he happens across his mom. And she's been hung by the Gestapo. Naturally, this completely shatters any sense of security or placement in the world that he has because now his father is off and the war and it's kind of hinted at that his father is not actually fighting for Germany but actually against Germany. I'm, I'm pretty sure they say that it might not be hinted. Regardless, upon seeing his mother's death, he runs back to his house and he shakily tries to stab the Jewish girl. She stops him and he just completely loses it at that point. He doesn't know what to do. So they have to spend the rest of this winter kind of surviving. He goes out and gets a little scraps of food that he can to keep them fed. And they basically wait out the war that is slowly coming into their town. So at the end of the movie, Jojo comes out of his house towards the end of all the bombings and everything. And he sees an American flag on the back of a truck coming across the screen. The Jewish girl asked if it's safe to go outside. He says, no, they're gonna have to, you know, play it cool and everything you know gotta gotta make sure that we're not taken by the germans or, or you know whatever so upon leaving the house she also sees an american flag realizes that jojo was lying to her she knows exactly why he's lying to her because she he has a crush on her um and he didn't want her to leave him and then they dance movie over so i left out a lot in that little recap of the movie but i kind of hit the main portions that i want to talk about today concerning love. Now, the most obviously pertaining kind of love in this movie to Valentine's Day 
is the crush that JoJo has on the Jewish girl. And I cannot remember her name. I'm going to look it up. It's Elsa. Now, she is a bit older than he is. I think she's like, I don't know, she was engaged to a guy. So I think she's like 17, 16, somewhere in, somewhere in that era. And JoJo is, of course, 10. But he has kind of a little boy crush on this older girl. If you're a guy, you've been there. You know what it's like. It hurts, man. But since she is actually engaged, he gets a little bit jealous at her uh, fiance, Nathan. Um, and as it turns out, he actually died way back when, even though she told him that he was just off fighting the war. So Jojo actually writes an apology letter through a whole thing. I'm not gonna explain the significance of that and everything, but it's very sweet. And you can tell uh, that he has actual true feelings for her, not just a crush. I mean, he, he genuinely cares about her which obviously helps forward along his arc of, you know, not hating Jews. But I don't think that that's the most important aspect of love that's in this film. I think the most important aspect of the love is between the boy and his mother. His mom is played by Scarlett Johansson, and she obviously loves her son more than anything in the world. There's a great scene at the dinner table where he knows that she's part of this resistance fighter, and she doesn't know that and he questions her on it, and she soon comes to realize exactly what he knows. But it's unspoken exactly what this tension is because neither of them wanna say what it is because that puts them both in a really awkward spot. Eventually, she puts on this coat and jacket and smears some like soot on her face to make her look like she has a beard, and she acts as though she's the father in a playful manner and she eventually explodes on him just out of anger in the moment towards the kid's persistence and then they they have a sweet moment where to make up they dance and it's a very sweet relationship just throughout the entire movie how much she cares about him and how much she is trying to slyly uh convince him to not be a nazi because again everybody around her was full-blown nazi and the fact that she wasn't, it not only speaks to just how brave she is, but just how morally righteous that she really is. But she's not just an instrument to change Jojo. She is her own character. She has thoughts and desires. She has moments where she loses her temper. She has moments where she says exactly what needs to be said. And all at the same time, despite all the things kind of coming in on her being the resistance fighter and hiding a Jew in her attic and her son finding out about her uh, moonlighting, essentially, and the fact that she's probably lost her husband, all of this never keeps her from being who she is. She's genuinely a very well-written character, and she works perfectly as JoJo's mom. And so the reason I wanted to talk about this on Valentine's Day, no, is not to further some Oedipus complex of mine, but is instead meant to simply say that there are different forms of love out there. The Greeks, I believe, name seven different types of love, and one of those, I can't remember what its Greek word is, is supposed to be the love between a parent and a child. This is one of the strongest forms of it outside of a uh, agape love, which is supposed to be an un unconditional kind of love. But I guess you could say, for the parent-child relationship, that that is true. And I believe that that type of love is expressed most purely in this film more than any other one that I've seen. And so that's why I wanted to talk about it on this Valentine's Day. I wanted to point out that, hey, you might be single, but you, you did have a mom at some point, hopefully still. And I think whether you're with your girl or you're by yourself, I think watching this movie is a great way to spend Valentine's Day, to really see different kinds of love and, and how they can be presented in a positive and yet not completely self-accepting way that we tend to view love nowadays. Because as it turns out, to love somebody is to love the best of them, not to love them exactly how they are with all their terrible faults. But that's a that's a topic for not this video. Well, hey, thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate it. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any other movies that you think show a strong, uh, loving relationship that aren't necessarily romantic, drop those uh, movie titles in the comments below. And if I haven't seen them, maybe I'll go check them out. I'd love to do that. But with that, I've been Kyle and I still am. And um, you can you can get the hell out of my house.